Hey, what's good? I'm Nick Rollo. I'm a pop producer. Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to show you how to use the listening bus in Studio One and how I use it. I think it's really handy. I think you will too. Before we get into the video, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. So first things first, you're going to go into Studio One, open up the mix window, click this button over here, and say enable listening bus. And we'll see this thing over here. This is the listening bus. Basically, the audio goes to both the main and the listening bus. It goes to the main first, so the main being the master bus or the mix bus. This is where you'd have your master bus, like your compression, your limiter, any EQ, spatial stuff. You think of it like the final track of the whole song. So your individual tracks all go to the master and then the master goes to the listening bus. So I use the listening bus to analyze the sound and like, you know, the levels and also to use Sonarworks or Sound ID to actually like make my room sound better. So I'll run you through it. Right now what I've got going on is Voxango, which is just sending it to the like video capture so you can actually see the screen and hear the audio. Next I've got Plugin Alliance AD PTR metric AB. So is the weekend's uh, blinding lights. So my song's here. And then if I press that AB button, it'll go to the song that's loaded in. I'm not gonna play it because it's gonna demonetize this video and give me a copyright claim, but it's really handy. You can do things like listen to the different frequencies, so the subs and the bass. You can check out the spectrum, correlation, stereo image, dynamics, loudness, all that stuff. Really handy tool, especially when I'm mixing. I love to use that to have like reference tracks in. Or you can do gain matching. Next, I've got PAS, which is just a frequency analyzer. Pretty self-explanatory, really helpful to have. I don't actually use it that much these days because I'm using Tonal Balance by Isotope. This is a game changer. Um, really, really, really good because you can do these high level targets to try and fit your mix into. Which I've clearly not done at all. Then I've got Insight Pro, which just tells me the loudness, the stereo field, uh, mainly for the loudness. Obviously that would be louder if I actually had stuff on the master channel, which I do not. Finally, the most important thing that I'm using this for is sound ID. This is for my speakers. Right now, I should technically be running it through the Audio Technicas, which are these bad boys, but sound ID is great. You have a little microphone if you buy the full thing and you measure out your speakers in your room and it tries to equalize it. As you can see, this is with calibration. This is what it's doing to my speakers. Without it, this is how my room sounds. So it's got quite a lot of loss here and a big boost them at 100 hertz just evens it out means that i can trust what i'm hearing and th th honestly that's the predominant reason or the predominant use of my listening bus basically when you export a song on the listening bus it disables it all so you have all your master bus stuff and if you had sonar works or something on the master bus it would actually export that and you don't actually want that to be impacting the sound so listening bus for me is just a it's literally just for analysis and for listening effects. Nothing that I actually want to send to the client that I'm producing or mixing for, or if I'm exporting the song to put to Spotify and stuff, I don't want any of these things on the listening bus. So to summarize, just use the listening bus for things that you don't want to export on your music. I hope that helps. And if it did, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you next one. Have a good day.